And Richard Southern joins us again. And Richard, with Valentine's Day around the corner, a Canadian restaurant chain is offering up some romance, it appears. How does getting married in Jack Astor sound to you, Melissa? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I can't say it's a, it's a dream wedding for me. Not, not your dream wedding? Uh, not what? exactly with those funny shirts and the sayings and that, it, but... It might be your dream price, though. For only a buck ninety-nine, you can get hitched in Jack Astor's right alongside the chicken fingers and the garlic <laughs> bread. Um, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just off the phone with I'm just off the phone with Megan from Jack Astor's. Take a listen. For $1.99, what we'll do is um, we'll allocate somebody in restaurant to host a ceremony. Uh, we ask for about 48 hours advance warning so that we can put together some dollar store decorations and a bit of a plan. But um, it's just a really, really fun way for us to have some fun around Valentine's Day uh, in a non-binding wedding fashion. Can I bring my own officiant, though, to make this all legal and above board? N no, we don't. Uh, we unfortunately are not a venue that runs um, legal weddings inside the restaurant. It's just for fun. Just for fun. Uh, do I get a wedding cake? Do the bride and groom get a wedding cake? We've been known to do a poutine cake or a chicken finger bouquet, but we uh, don't have a special cake designated for $1.99 weddings. So there you go, Melissa. It's not, in <laughs> fact, legally binding. Okay, but cost-effective, and you get a chicken finger bouquet, which all sounds really I'll, good. I'll take that chicken finger bouquet. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll say I do to that. There we go. And remember that uh, REM song, The End of the World as We Know It? Well, apparently, it could come sooner than we actually think. The doomsday clock is ticking towards midnight, not to alarm you. It is uh, it's Melissa. terrifying, actually. I know. It's closer to midnight than it's ever been. It's 100 seconds away, less than two minutes. And um, it's this clock, by the way, was created before the Cold War. It's uh, moved annually by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. And they say they moved it closer to midnight now because of the possibility uh, that the Iran nuclear deal, deal the falling apart, and tensions between India and Pakistan could lead to nuclear war. Uh, they also mention artificial intelligence getting out of control, hypersonic weapons, and climate change. Now, critics of the clock uh, have questioned its usefulness. They argue that the apocalyptic analysis can actually paralyze people into doing nothing. But I just like saying doomsday clock. It sounds very alarmist indeed. <laughs> You're terrifying me, and I'm just not ready. And there's right. no traffic and weather on the ones on the doomsday <laughs> clock, I should point out. Good That's to know, good to know. And as we've all heard of a therapy animals such as dogs and cats, but one Brooklyn man could be taking that a little too far, Richard. Yeah, he's using his head. 47-year-old man in Brooklyn, New York, has registered a pint of beer to be his emotional support animal. So he says he plans to use the certification, or the certification to carry his beer with him on public transit and airplanes. He says he's doing it because he actually does want to have a, have a drink on the go. He's not trying to make a point about emotional support animals, which some people think have gotten a bit out of control. You know, we know guide dogs are important and so forth, but we've seen now everything from pigs to pheasants, rabbits, snakes, even small horses being registered as support animals, allowing people to bring those animals on airplanes, irking other travelers. In fact, uh, some U.S. airlines now say they're planning to crack down on that. But that guy's thinking, registering mm. his uh, pint of beer, don't you think? I think I'm going to go register my bottle of wine. <laughs> There's Melissa walking Why down not? the street with her bottle of wine. <laughs> I, it's the work is stressful. You know, we talked about the gray hairs. I'm trying to prevent that. So. Just a little tipple. It's all above board. Not to worry. There you go. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Richard.